Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Mel Hauser. I use she, they pronouns, and I'm executive director here at All Brains Belong. Welcome to Brain Club. Let me share slides and I'll get us oriented. Except I never click the things in the order that results in actually sharing slides. Here we go. So today we're kicking off our new monthly theme on understanding your access needs. This of course is Brain Club, our weekly community education space for the broader ABB community to educate about neurodiversity and topics related to inclusive community. Just a reminder, um, or maybe this might be new information if you're new to Brain Club, this is for education purposes only. This is not a support group and it's not for medical or mental health advice. All forms of participation are okay here at Brain Club. You can have your video on or off. And even if it's on, we don't expect anything of you. We certainly don't need you to sit still or look at the camera or anything. Um, feel free to walk, move, fidget, stim, eat, all the things, do what needs doing. Everyone's welcome here and all formats of communication are welcome here. You can unmute and use mouth words. You can type in the chat box. Um, we will have a portion of today's Brain Club with a pre-recorded um, video of uh, multiple community members sharing sharing their experiences. So that'll be um, during that time, um, we'll have just the chat box going, um, but we'll also have plenty of time for discussion afterwards. In addition to affirming all aspects of identity, it's really important uh, to us that we respect and protect the group's collective access needs. Um, and individually, um, we do have direct messaging enabled. So if you're uncomfortable for any reason, hey, Lizzie, are you around? Or are, you, are, you, are you at a place where you could wave? Hi, great. That's Lizzie, our education programs coordinator. So if you send Lizzie a direct message, she will see it sooner than I will. Um, so if, if, if you need anything, if you're uncomfortable for any reason, just send, send Lizzie a private message. Okay. Um, speaking of um, collective access needs, um, in order to cue safety for a broad range of communication access needs, we, uh, we will we'll periodically pause today um, to give extra space and time for, for folks to join in in whatever way works for them. Um, I think that we all have different access needs. We'll talk about that today. And um, we... we uh, definitely want to give give space um, so that uh, while there's no pressure to directly communicate during Brain Club, we want to make sure that anyone who wants to is able to join in the conversation. And sometimes that's hard to do. It's hard to do that when there's like not, not, not so much space. Okay, last uh, word about access. Um, closed captioning is enabled. You just have to toggle it on if you'd like to use it. So depending on your version of Zoom, you might see the live transcript closed captioning icon. And if not, look for the more dot, dot, dot and choose show subtitles. You can do the same and choose hide subtitles if you want to turn them off. And that's my visual support to open up the chat box. So now I can see it if anybody's using it. All right, so as I said, we're kicking off our theme of the month, understanding your access needs. And today in particular, we're gonna be talking about the role of Brain Club in particular in helping folks understand access needs. And we'll be hearing from um, uh, several of our community members about their experiences and then asking you what you think. Um, we'll continue the theme next week in discussing access needs in healthcare, followed by access needs in employment. All right, so if you've uh, spent any time with uh, any All Brains Belong program, you know we talk a lot about access needs here. And that's because the our community advisory board that informs all of our programs um, a year or so ago, um, I asked, how will we know that our community has become more neuroinclusive? And if you can uh, you know, just take a quick glance at this, access needs comes up so many times. And so really for the past year and a half, we've been talking about access needs everywhere we go and everything that we do, because it's really, really important. Access needs are anything required to meaningfully and fully participate in one's environment or community. 
everyone has access needs. Um, everyone with all types of brains has access needs. It's just that um, neurodivergent folks are less likely to have our access needs met by the defaults of society. There's all kinds of access needs, physical, emotional, communication, and so on. And what we talk a lot about here at Brain Club is how all of those things play out in everyday life. And um, it's, you know, it's interesting. And in, in, as, as part of our video we'll be watching, um, you'll, you'll hear more about the origins of Brain Club um, and you know, how it got started. Why did we create the program? How did it evolve over time? Um, but it was, um, it was kind of an accident. Um, but the, the, the original mission of Brain Club was to provide language to help people understand their access needs and how they play out in everyday life. And um, uh, Lizzie pulled some numbers for us. Thanks, Lizzie. Uh, so um, we've had um, uh, almost 1,200 total participants in Brain Club since its origins uh, from five countries across three continents. Pretty cool. I found that data surprising. Um, pretty cool. And a lot of, though, of course, there's a different theme of the month every month, um, you know, some of the same themes keep coming up. And um, Lizzie's going to put in the chat, uh, for those of you who don't know, all of our recordings dating back to January 2022 when we began, they're all available for free on our website. Um, and so um, though, though, though uh, there's lots of content from old brain clubs that, you know, uh, uh, they resurface from time to time, um, there's still a lot of, a lot of treasures that, that folks may not have seen. So check it out. All right, so understanding the impact of Brain Club, and I know that some of you are brand new to Brain Club, some of you have been here since the beginning and lots of people in between, um, but um, what we'll, we're, we're about to watch is about a 30 minute collection of community panelists, um, both who've been uh, participating from the beginning and who are new to Brain Club, sharing what their experiences are. And along the way, I'd love to hear, um, you know, reactions, comments in the chat box. And then, as I said, we'll have plenty of discussion after the video panel. All right, David, take it away. feel so very comfortable right from the welcome to the community standards or agreements. I'm not sure of the terminology you use, the format, like the whole container and the whole, the way that people participate and interact, it's really respectful. Nobody offers me advice. People just listen cheer like the whole culture that you've cultivated it, it's so easy like it's just like i i exhaled like i landed in your group and i exhaled and i've been telling everybody about it i've been like this is just wild i do feel like it's so different from other groups i've been a part of where like it's an evening time. I'm not typically somebody who wants to join things in the evening time. I'm usually with my family and I love that in brain club, I can have my family with me. They can be on my lap. I can be making dinner. I can be eating dinner. Um, and I think that really makes it unique compared to typical things I've been a part of. I also feel like there's no judgment if I have my screen off. Like I've had times where I turn down the volume and talk to my family, turn back up the volume and tune back in. And that ability to kind of come in and out as it serves me, I think is really unique to Brain Club. And that that's not only welcome, it's invited behavior as like an accepted and celebrated way of showing up. Thank you for saying that. I mean, I think that we try very much to like explicitly cue safety by normalizing all the very normal human life things. And I think there are settings where it would be okay to do all of that, but if you don't say it, you don't norm it. If you don't norm it, then there are lots of brains who 
don't know it's okay because of all the environments where it's not okay where there's like shame for like what do you mean you're drinking coffee during a zoom meeting like i think brain club has been similar in that it's just ex it's exposing me to people being so so um beautifully raw and authentic so to have a place where i'm not masking and i'm not acting and i'm not spending over half of my mental energy trying to figure out what they expect from me no i don't have that anywhere else recently there was sort of like a like a video clip going around the internet and it's um renee brown and um I like her okay, but I like her most when she's talking about, when she's kind of like defining core things in contrast to other core things. And so in this video clip, she talks about um, the difference between belonging and fitting in. And she actually says, the research says that the opposite of belonging is fitting in because you are changing yourself to fit the norms of the already established group and what i realize now is i spent my whole life trying to fit in to belong but when i'm fitting in i don't get to be myself i get to be like the version of the outside world of trying to to and how much anxiety that has cost me um, and how exhausted I am. Um, and that to be in a community where I get to explore and learn about my brain and other people and other people's brains and that there's a continuum like that doesn't it's not ending. It's like just dyspraxia is like this new idea for me even you know and it's like I'm learning how to integrate that into my movements and into my life. Uh, I I have been, I've had autism since birth, but I haven't had the words for it or the understanding that, that this is my experience. So I'm doing a bit of time traveling. I'm going back many decades and I'm realizing that's why I did that. That's why I responded that. That's why I needed it to be that way. And when it wasn't that way, that's why I melted down. That's why I ran away. Like it's all making so much sense now and it's both a relief and it's also a source of sorrow. Like, wow, like I'm, I'm rejoicing and I'm mourning at the same time. Yeah. That resonates with me so much. It's like, um, it's, 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 it's all of the, you know, like the rewriting of decades anyway they're like i i have sorrow i have rage i have like all of that at the same time of like relief and you know like all, all of that and just all my life i felt broken lost and like a failure always thinking i was too much hating myself and wondering how others did life so easily when we tell sweet little loves that the way that we are intuitively feeling in our bodies is wrong because there's a just so way to be what do we expect is going to happen when i realized i was an autistic adhd -er, i finally felt whole and loved myself for the first time in my life abb's resources and community have helped me bloom into my true self and made me feel like I finally, truly belong. I was looking for a community of like-minded individuals so that I could share my experiences and learn. And I have found that in All Brains Belong. I'm really enjoying going to the weekly Brain Club meetings and talking with other people that are neurodivergent and also particularly our parents. Behaviors, things we can observe that communicate someone's underlying physiologic state. I'm learning new strategies on how to communicate better for my kids and advocate for my children in school systems. Big, big, big part of my motivation, you know, in trying to find answers for all of this is so that my kiddos 
don't have to deal with that, like so that they have a safe space to fall apart, break down, be dysregulated, feel all the feelings, but also like feel the joy. Oh my goodness. I think it's helped me recognize so many, you know what, I think so much of what we do, like when we're talking about neurodiversity is we identify like that's ableist and this is wrong and that's a problem. And I think one of the things that makes Brain Club really unique is it not only names the thing and names the problems, but it also offers strategies to do it better. Um, and I think that's just so unique. So like in my own family, it's not just saying this kind of parenting might not be the most effective or helpful for, doesn't feel good for me and it probably doesn't feel good for my kids, but it's also inviting me to parent in a way that I maybe hadn't thought about um, and people sharing their experiences doing that. And I think it's helped me get a little more experimental in my parenting in ways that feel more authentic and I think have helped me and helped my kids a lot. I met Mel Hauser a couple of years ago on the State House lawn. And um, from Mel, I heard the term access needs for the first time in my life. And uh, that same day in texting with my family, I was able to create space for myself within my family for the fir very first time. And I am 52 years old. Yeah, that's the story. Brain Club was not something uh. we ever planned. It was like this, we have to give language to this experience of showing up and 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 feeling like you don't have to like run through the checklist of like what are they expecting of me mm. and it, it, you just the more people who are talking about what's going on in their for, for them for themselves authentically and then somebody's like oh me too and you're like oh yeah me too and then you're like oh I'm I I, I feel like I belong and it just it just happens yeah I think that's that that was my that has been my experience of the brain clubs is that so first of all my first experience of the brain club was kind of like the radical idea of having being able to honor like different communication styles like it turns out that um i like typing in the chat way more than talking because i can uh cuz because i can um express myself e exactly the way i want to and i'm not as dysregulated and i'm not thinking about like oh what are people thinking of me right now and oh is my eye twitching and things like that <laughs> and and then so i would just kind of like put random thoughts in the chat and get like immediate validation or i would get like oh that's why i think that about that thing and then and then i would be reading in the chat and then this the same thing would get mirrored back to me where somebody else would say something and it would be just like a, a huge light bulb for me and then like that was happening multiple times over the course of each brain club to the point where i'm just like oh this is a lot coming in but in a good way and and that exchange absolutely builds trust um because the space allows that and i can't think of many spaces in life that um that allow for people to um to come together in this way and kind of like this radical act of trust <laughs> like how that means so much to me it means so much to me but like when you when you when you really think about it right i mean it's 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 like radical trust radical reimagining of building trust in other people in this way that like most of us have never experienced before yeah. and at the same time what we're doing is not rocket science. It's yes, actually yeah. not that hard to help people feel like they belong. Um, one of the gifts that All Brains Belong has given to me, and I think so many other people, is, is a common language based on common experience that we didn't know existed before. And when we can see ourselves reflected in the stories of other people, we become more okay with ourselves. And so 
that that I think is the is the magic and and community and communication. You know, they sound they sound very similar, and um, and we promote both in an accepting um, village of people. Um, you know, I had never heard anyone else talk about their their um, their burning hatred of leaf blower noise. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's me, too. Someone becomes more familiar with their own experience when they hear someone or read mm -hmm. someone describe it. And you're like, oh, that that matches. But like, I didn't necessarily have words to describe oh, wow. what that was. Yeah, like totally that happens. Like, that's what Brain Club is. Like, that's what group medical visits yeah. are. Like, that's that's what we do all day here. Um, But like it. And 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 um, it's interesting. I'm I'm gonna go back and um and 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 dig this up. But um, we actually recorded. We had the presence of mind to record, not knowing what we would ever do with it. But we recorded a um, a conversation between our former board chair Hannah Bloom, um, myself, and Lizzie, our education programs coordinator. We were we were debriefing our first vaccination clinic. Mm. And we, you know, it was like it was like post post clinic, like let's let's like have a meeting and like see what we would do different next time. And so even like, if kids are not able to receive vaccination because the limbic system says no, I think it's you know, re reframing what success is. Yeah. You know, success is not always just getting the vaccine. Success is wow, you recognized when you didn't feel safe and you honored your internalized signal of threat like isn't that what we want it's a good thing when people have a positive healthcare experience like defining like the connection of you know i formed some sort of memory that wasn't awful the more that that pattern goes right those neurons that fire together the more they do that the more that pathway pathway is accessible and has ease there's no ease in that pathway for a lot of our nervous systems right now because there has been no autonomy, because there's been no agency, there's been no freedom and choice. You know, we realized we had to start talking about these concepts. We had to give people language for their experiences. And that, that was how Brain Club was born. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Brain Club. Brain Club is like a great innovation and like open to the public and a chance for like you know a, a robust discussion about bringing the spectrum of life issues um so uh without further ado let's talk about some lid flipping he flips the lid once yeah or, or twice or, or like twice. a million times or 400 million times, or million times. Mm -hmm. did you know that some people think that they're the only ones who flip their lid <laughs> Did you know that? No. Oh. <laughs> Some people think they're the only ones, and they like they 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 like they feel bad about themselves because they think they're the only one. Yeah, I'm not alone in that particular journey. It's it's helping to hear other people share because it's building up my my language, my communication skills. It's also. Um, smoothing out the rough edges of my experiences and of my perceptions i'm less harsh on myself i'm less sharp with myself like it's just kind of creating a glow like a smoothness around my experience right it's it's most of the patterns of my life have in, when it comes to social situation social situations has been me coming into a group kind of going oh crap, how do I fit in here? You know, what are the norms? What do I have to figure out? You know, who's got the most power in this situation? Who's the person who's left out? Um, what are the dynamics here? And I'm in a panic trying to assess the social dynamics as quickly as possible. And I, and when you're in, um, when you're in a state of belonging, you're not, doing that you're just kind of like in a heart space um and i've been thinking about that because i think what what all brains belong is is the possibility of belonging in a in a way that other places have not been for me and i wonder if that resonates for uh, for you and for other people <laughs> Hello. 
I mean, it's interesting, like in, in like doing the work of showing up, like showing up authentically and having other people also show up and over time and not even over time, like it, it happened pretty quickly. Like people show up and you're like, Hey, let's be authentic. And they're like, I don't know how to do that, but okay, I'll hear you out. I also feel like there is that bringing of my personhood in brain club that I don't do in other settings where it's so important to allow difference to be a wonder and allow yourself to be different within even your relationship to someone who knows themselves to be different and to be curious and to ask questions and to, instead of presume we're all in this together as individuals that you know that sees things differently hears things differently and moves things differently to me the broader public that are you know parents and autistic individuals that knew about me that i'm very very compassionate supportive and i do take a leadership role when necessary to support those individuals that may not have a voice they may not even know how to speak you know with their voices or they may not understand what we're talking about because that's not that's not the way our brains act re in reality work you know everybody's brain is thinks differently and acts differently and for the autistic community uh it's about you know understanding other people's brains works mm -hmm. and how to connect with that brain and a mean and having a meaningful conversation and discussion within that brain pattern of an autistic individual. Other than that, it basically means that my brain has differences in the way that it works and processes information. There are some things that it does really well. There are some things that it really sucks at. Um, but fundamentally, I don't look at my autism is anything that needs to be cured. I look at it as a part of the natural standard deviation in terms of what is normal. Can you talk a little bit about the strengths and the challenges that you feel like go along with being autistic? The, my biggest, you know, brain strength is insight and knowledge, you know, a world around me, plus the environment, if it's toxic or welcoming, and you know for me that's my that's my biggest strength is you know my brain is thinking fast on its feet and how and the way it sees the world's perspective view my brain's weakness is is trying to comprehend or doing doing too much overriding comprehending the situation mm -hmm. and trying to analyze it in its own way, but there's too much, you know, background brain status noises that it makes it hard for my brain to comprehend on what to focus on. Knowledge is everything. Knowledge is, well, insight, insight is everything because of when you have the insight, um, I can, I can automatically forgive myself for all the sins I thought I committed, but actually never did. Brain Club has given me words for experiences that I didn't have words for before. Um, one example that jumps to mind is um, autistic burnout is something that we've talked a lot about in Brain Club. And I've had not experiences having autistic burnout myself, but in my family experiencing autistic burnout. And I, felt an overwhelming sense of belonging and feeling understood in these experiences that I, no one in my life had ever related to those experiences before. And I remember there was one brain club in particular where I had to turn my screen off and just like cry. <laughs> like I just felt like this is so deeply 
validating in my soul in a way that I had never had anyone validate that experience before. Because neurodivergent burnout is no joke. You know, hot flashes, chills, appetite in the in the trash can, um, fogginess, um, just all of those things coming together. And and you know, now I look back on my life and I'm like, I was tired and foggy when I was 18. My story with autistic burnout to me to explain to somebody with no experience. It would take me, sorry, I'm dinging everywhere. It would take me paragraphs to explain that to somebody. And still I'd walk away feeling like, I don't really know if they get what I'm talking about at all. I can unmask. I can talk in shorthand. People understand what I'm saying without me having to explain a whole backstory. Like to be understood and to be seen and to be accepted and welcomed and encouraged to participate it's just it's all the things as you like to say it's all the things <laughs> and this is like you know, there are two words and people are like oh yeah i get it that's it and i feel like that's just one example of some of the language that brain club has given me to talk about things like my family uses so many words and like my kids talk about flipping their lids and they they can do hand gestures when they can't articulate it with words and and it's just like all these like there's a there's a shared language that the language is just like the top surface level of what really is shared like it's rooted deeply in a shared understanding of the world but just having those words it's so powerful to have words to share that experience. We have to give people language to talk about these things because they yeah. are universal. And yet we didn't grow up with any language to understand these things, name these things, experience these things, um, work with these things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think language can be like underestimated, like people think like it's just words and, but I think when you don't have the words for something, when you get the words, like it's, I think it, it just, it makes things feel okay. When you have words to say what they are, like it, I don't know, it makes them feel shared and connected and not so alone and isolated when you don't have words to describe them. And I'm extremely socially isolated. My world is a four block radius, pretty much. And so I'd like to say that I think the most, one thing that's been really important to me is I'm not tired after brain club. I'm actually revived, like it's refreshing because it's easy to be there. So to find something that is engaging and fun and interesting but doesn't exhaust me doesn't doesn't tire me period like not at all it gives me spoons if anything you know and forks and some knives and a ladle <laughs> i think being in a neuro mixed family there is this ableist assumption that like neurodivergent folks have access needs and neurotypical folks don't. And I think just coming to an understanding of you have needs, I have needs, all of our needs are valid and recognizing my own has helped me not, I hope, I think, not, not make my other people in my life feel so othered by their needs, by kind of owning mine and using that as a communication tool to talk about mine and talk about theirs. And I think it helps me not place blame on one person for their needs um, to kind of recognize what my own are. And I think that's been really helpful in reshaping the way that I think about my family and the way that I think about like the needs of each person in my family as being all important and all priorities and all equal in what they are. But I think when you only name the needs of one or two people in your family, it automatically creates tears. And I think having words for access needs and starting to know what those are, A, helps them be met and B, helps make me better at meeting other people's needs. And so the fact that I'm sort of like 
understanding the importance of safety as a need for me now at this point in my life is really allowing me to take some risks and trust some people and try to figure out what is the more authentic for me just by understanding what the scope of safety is. It's amazing. And I wonder how, how for you does that connect to, because I mean, when you spoke about trust and trusting other people, it's like, like the experience of belonging, like, like, like what's the relationship between for you, like belonging and the safety now that you know, you need and are seeking, like, do those things connect at all? Yeah. I absolutely I think I think they absolutely go together. And I think what's um I think more than that too is that I'm able to um now that I'm aware of it, I'm able to voice that for my kids who are dealing with similar neuroception. Like I'm able to go into their spaces, their activities, their schooling and say like this is this is what they need. Let's figure out how to create it. I, I don't know. I mean, for, for, for me as a parent, being surrounded by other people who see the world as I do or like want to see the world as I do, that's what, that, that's what allows me to unlearn or question assumptions or whatever. I don't feel like I'm like making it up because... I'm surrounded by other people who get it. Did, 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 did you have that before Brain Club? Like, did you have like, no. I th I think, I think that part of it for me is that, like you're saying, people who, I wouldn't say for me, it's been people who share the way I see the world necessarily as people who share the way I want to see the world and what I want the world to be. And I feel like, I I feel like there isn't a good space to dream like that in the in the real world and i think brain club has made me feel like there are new possibilities that i hadn't even had the idea to dream of before brain club and i feel like having those conversations with people makes me realize what i want things to look like and feel like and then start on that path to try and make things closer to that dream really thankful for the people that that show up and not just, you know, what am I trying to say? The, the people that show up in all the ways that they show up. Oh, that's beautiful. No, that's exactly right. It's like, it's not, all brains belong doesn't do the thing. All brains belong um, provides a structure and framework for the people, the, you know, the village members to like rally together in this, like, you know, this, this beautiful community of of doing it differently, of reimagining, like you said, and, you know, reimagining a better life. I want to share a couple of things with you before we open this up for conversation. So um, a year ago, um, in October of 2022, we did a brain club on neuro-inclusive social space. And we introduced this framework of what creates neuro-inclusive space, three things. One, setting ground rules. Two, explicitly normalizing diversity. And three, normalizing access needs and navigating conflicting access needs because it's inevitable. And um, uh, it, it, and and so uh, a year ago, we also we had a kids program in person in the woods, um, and we would write these things out with with pictures to demonstrate them, like on the cement, um, because it, it it really makes a huge difference. And even even teaching young kids, you know, five to ten year olds about this is it's just part of the key to the universe. So I'm gonna share some quotes um, from another uh, community member. Ground rules. There's something very reassuring about that way of grounding us each time as we begin. 
And I think we we heard that from several several folks in the video. Normalizing diversity, no right way to participate. I feel liberated by being accepted as I am, say, because I'd rather respond to questions in writing or knowing that I can be fully present in a session of Brain Club without having to say anything. Reading the chat box is evidence of the heartful and mutually supportive sparklings of insight that are constantly happening, but without the spoken words that tend to dominate most group discussions. Reflections on connecting with other Brain Club participants. I learned so much from hearing other Brain Club participant stories, sometimes because I recognize in them things I experienced myself, sometimes because of just appreciating the variety of ways people can be in the world and still belong. This one. I end up more open to the wholeness of myself and others inside and outside of Brain Club. Uh, specifically related to understanding one's access needs. Like a lot of people throughout my life, I knew that many things weren't working for me. I never thought of this as relating to access needs though. I thought I just had character flaws. I now see a lot of this as simply reflecting the ways a brain-like mind would raggedly interact with a neurotypical world. Wow. I wonder if anyone, whether you're new to Brain Club, even if this is your first Brain Club, or if you've been here since, you know, almost two years, um, I'd love to hear how, how does this resonate? Um, how does, what, what's it like to experience Brain Club for you? Laura shares in the chat, there aren't words that describe my gratitude for this community. My human deeply loves the humans here. Please. Jay. Hi there. Um, I don't know if we're supposed to raise our hand before we talk, but uh, I thought- You I could or you could not. Anything goes. <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm just feeling really grateful for um, being in a space where there are a lot of neurodivergent people all sharing their experiences, because I find that in my work, I'm usually in spaces with very neurotypical people who don't understand um, access needs. And um, it's just nice to be in a space where I feel like I can say something and everyone will will kind of understand it. It's just great to, to feel that way. That's the same reason that I participate in like non-binary um, affinity groups where like trans and non-binary people are like in the majority. So it's like really nice to like, feel like I'm not the only person in the room with they, them pronouns. Speaking of which, loving all of the people with they, them pronouns um, and feeling very supported and seen by all of the, all of the folks who, um, who have they, them after their names. Um, so thank you all for being here. Awesome, Jay, thank you so much for being here. Oh, wow, Christina. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Siri. Yeah, go ahead. I love this. I'm so glad that I found this. Um, I really enjoy listening to all of the testimonials because really that's what those are. And, you know, they were phenomenal to hear and um, excited to have such a safe space for all of this. Even if you're all in Vermont and so far away. Not, not you all, but <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, Sierra. Reading in the chat, uh, Christina says, one of the very first truly safe places I have ever been in. Wow. 
Bruno says, it's a lot of validation and hearing and reading people's experiences that reflect my own in so many ways. I felt alone for so many years and not knowing why I suffered in the many ways that I do. Also needs with me, Bruno. Michelle? Well, I just wanted to say what I have found very moving here is that there are little kernels of truth that have been sprinkled throughout the panel and throughout the chat and they're just mind altering or life altering and they're like i don't know it's like looking through a crystal or something they they just make you see the world differently and thank you for that thank you I truly appreciate it. Michelle, I just want to pause with that. I mean, that's, um, you know what, that's, um, my brain is connecting all the things to all the things. Um, it, it reminds me of, we had a panelist in April. Um, it was a panel about the experience of becoming identified autistic as an adult. And the panelists said that learning that they were autistic was like a kaleidoscope, like coming into view. Mm -hmm. So just like the idea of like clarity. Um, and I, 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 I so feel like it's community, it's coming together, it's belonging. That is what allows people to shift their own narrative. It's just like that clarity comes the clarity is the shifting of your own narrative and you do that in community. Right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Kim says, Brain Club is one of the few spaces in my life where I am out as neurodivergent and I feel so free. I don't have to spend half my time and all my energy making my communication palatable and pleasing for others. I can focus on I can focus on the experience of being here rather than contorting myself into some other person to earn acceptance. Oh. Thank you, Kim. And Monique, I'm glad you can access this from Vancouver, BC as well. just want to create space for anyone who has not had a chance to share either in the chat or out loud. Um, just want to invite anyone to share. And um, as, as, as Laura says, the, 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 the silence is okay. And so much so, like, I think that there are without that silence like it's hard it's hard for lots of brains to even like process and then join in a conversation because it moved it, it moved on already um and so creating creating space for that Caitlin like <laughs> oh. says, I really like hearing everyone here that in a neurotypical setting wouldn't likely be heard or cut off. Yeah. Kale says, for a while now, I've been trying to find more people like me, people I can relate to, and I finally found something I can be a part of. It's amazing. I'm so glad you're here.
show. Well, I had a question and maybe it's just me. Um, but sometimes, not right now, because we're, we're doing things fairly slowly, but I sometimes have a hard time keeping up with a chat and a main panel at, or a main presentation at the same time. And I'm just wondering, um, do other folks in this club feel that way? Or, I, I mean, I think the way things are presented here, it's okay because you don't feel like you've missed out. Um, but I think like in the neurodiversity summit sometimes or in other webinars, I felt like there's too much coming at me. I cannot do this all at once. Um, so to me, that's an access need. And I think, I, I think this club is good in dealing with that because it doesn't feel like there's an expectation that you're keeping up with the main stage and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. I think what you're really, what you're calling to mind, this is an example. Hi, Claire. <coughs> oh, um, um, uh, you're, you're really talking about conflicting access needs, oh, right? Good. So, and so con what conflicting access needs are is that two people have needs that are opposite because there are just as there are so many people for whom, um, you know, the onslaught of like multiple channels, it's like, well, um, th there, there are other brains that need the rapid fire. Um, otherwise the attention is lost. Um, and need to impulsively, um, you know, like me, I will need to impulsively communicate or I'll lose it. Be I'll lose the idea because working memory. Um, so the chat is a place that I can impulsively communicate without um, like interrupting someone. So it's really about, and as Sarah says, moving at the pace of each other. Thanks, Allison. Um, it's um it's 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 really and it's and it's and and, and as Nita is referring it's, it's, yes Sierra that used to be a thing I would read out everything with a live panel and a live this and so um pre recorded panels is a way of um negotiating conflicting access needs I can't facilitate conversation and a panel and a chat. And so that's why we do it this way. We didn't used to for almost all of Brain Club, if you can believe that. Um, and as the group got larger, it just became like, how are we going to do that? And so I, I, I would say that part of neuroinclusive space as, and again, it's all an act of like community co-creation, but I, I think it's the idea that nothing is the default it's right. the idea that there's like, I, and I, I wouldn't, it's interesting, like, you know, I, 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 the term main stage, I'm thinking like, you know, coming to the concert, it's up on the main stage as opposed to the side stages, but I don't actually even think that the Zoom central screen is the main stage. I think many people would say that the chat is where their action is. And so it's like offering multiple ways to participate. So you can participate by um, quietly watching a panel, you can participate by like, you know, sending, you know, 50 chat messages an hour, you can, and, 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 and I think that um, one of the reasons that reading all the chat boxes out, um, it's like the, um, it made, it made the, it made there be a main stage. Right. As opposed to now there are truly multiple ways to participate. Sarah. Thanks. Yeah, I was just going to um, share. I, I shared this story recently at a meeting, but um, I wanted to share it with um, everyone at Brain Club, too. Um, I think when we talk about having language to um, explain our experience, um, sharing that with our children and giving our children language to explain their experience from such a younger age than so many of us have had it. Um, and I just think about like, it, it's so powerful to me. And I, um, and the story is that, um, my eight-year-old uh, grabbed a piece of paper when he was seven. So last year, you know, after my involvement with All Brains Belong and um, 
and he wrote in his own handwriting, um, come in, my brain belongs and put it on his door to his bedroom and it's still there. And, um, you know, I mean, just like the power in that, that a, a child would feel, you know, so powerful. I love the heart. That's awesome. <laughs> um, that they would feel that, you know, like from a young age, like understanding that their brain belongs and that there isn't one right way to have a brain to think about things and to learn and to communicate. I love that, Sarah. I come from a family who were just brushing the surface on how many individuals in my genetic family tree are very likely neurodivergent in some or many ways. And unfortunately, where I see it the most is um, my mother's parents and their denial of their neurodiversity and their intensity on masking has caused so much anxiety in, in their family. And uh, now it, it's up to me and my brother and those who are doing our best to like unlearn some of that stuff. And it is so heartening to know that this generation after us, even, even though I don't have any kids of my own, this is my kid. Oh, well, sorry. One, sorry. <laughs> this is my kid. I don't know what side. I'm not mirrored anymore. <laughs> I wanted y'all to see my shirt. <laughs> Um, anyway, but yeah, there's so much, uh, unlearning of trauma we all are doing and it is so awesome when we see something as, um, healing as that. Sierra, thank you so much. And, you know, I, I think what you just said there is, is it's that unlearning. And so not only, you know, to, to, to quote Liz of the radical act of trust, um, but it's the radical act of trust in community to arrive at clarity of one's own narrative and to be able to unlearn the rest. So to wrap us up, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna play a quick video impulsively because I think I think this is the future. My sister. Hold on, it's not loud enough. My sister went to Stuffy's night and she had a lot of fun because she be herself. Do I show him Bunny? Hi, I am Spencer, and this picture I made uh, the Mega Mushroom for Mario represents all brains belong. So you see, there's the big, uh, yeah, the big house and the brain in it, because really, all brains belong, and I honor that. So this is my picture. So yeah. <coughs> So with that, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for being part of our community. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week discussing access needs in healthcare. Thanks, everybody. And thank you so much to our panelists.